Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. This morning, I'll be preaching from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. And this is what it says. And as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And it happened that as he was reclining at table in the house, behold, many tax gatherers and sinners came and joined Jesus and his disciples at the table. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax gatherers and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are ill. But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts on, puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and a worse tear results. Nor do men put new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wineskins burst and the wine pours out. And the wineskins are ruined, but they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. Pray with me. Jesus, this is new day. This is your day. And thank you that we get to be a part of it. Breathe your spirit on us this day, now at this time. As we open up scripture, may we not just hear old words, but hear your voice calling to us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have you ever been the victim of gossip or rumors? I'm a minister and I never have, so I was just asking if, if you had. Well, the chances are pretty good. If you made it through middle school, it's happened to you. There's something about somebody saying an, an unkind word that um, maybe it was that, that offhand snide remark that you heard and you knew what it was like. You knew what it was like, and it hurt. Well, read a story about a fellow named Eddie Bueno. He lived in, in Denver, Colorado. He was one of 18 children. And newspaper in Colorado did a story on Denver's biggest crime family. And in that story, it said that Eddie Bueno's family, that of the 18 children in that family, 15 of them had arrest records. Well, the problem was that Eddie Bueno did not, that he left home at the age of 13 trying to get away from that. 
he had led a morally upright life and he had never been arrested. And when the story came out, his life got instantly difficult because of the story of his family. So he sued the newspaper and he won. It makes me wonder what it must have been like to be Matthew. Folks behind him and around him and probably even to his face. Gossiping, rumors, snide remarks. The difference was he earned it. He had decided to collaborate with the Romans. The Romans who were the enemies of Israel. He was helping to take up tax to keep them in power, to keep them strong. And this is who Jesus calls. The one who had betrayed his own country, betrayed his own family. The one who had earned (laughs) the vicious remarks, the snide remark. And this is the one that Jesus calls. He calls him and he says, follow me. And what it tells us is it says, and he rose and followed him. In other words, he couldn't stay where he was and follow Jesus. He wasn't telling him just to, to, to change the feeling in your heart. He, he was calling him to a new life. And Jesus refers to this in, in, in a parable at the end of our reading this morning. Jesus talks about a new patch. You can't put a new patch on old clothes. You can't put a n- new wine in old wineskins. In other words, you can't put a new creation or a new kingdom and a life filled with old ways. That we can't stay where we are and follow Jesus when Jesus calls. Well, Jesus calls us to be his disciples just as he called Matthew. And that call is a call to wholeness. This is what verse 12 says. When Jesus heard this, he said, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are ill. It's not those who are healthy who need a physician, those who are ill. To know that they're they're broken, to know that they're in need, to know that they're hurting, is when they go to the great physician. Read a story about a forest ranger in Wales. And he talked about how people would Thousands of people would come every year to walk the trails, the hills, the mountains, to cross the streams of the area where he was the the forest ranger. And in this article, he talked about the most common question. He said, wasn't how long are the trails or are the trails safe and is the wildlife going to hurt us? It wasn't about bug spray. The number one question was, where do we start? Well, following Jesus, he makes it clear that the starting place is repentance. John the Baptist in the book of Matthew, his first word in his first sermon was repent. Jesus' first word in the gospel of Mark was repent. The disciples preaching the first word was repent. That we can't stay where we are and follow Jesus. That to follow Jesus requires a change, a turn, that we can't stay where we are. We can't stay in our old ways. That the word for repent is metanoia. It means a a change of mind. It means a change of attitude. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. He took the bitterness, he took the anger, he took the fear, he took the brokenness and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power once and for all. So when Jesus calls, nothing gets in the way. When Jesus calls, we can turn, we can change. We have power that we don't have on our own and it's the power of the great physician that makes us whole. It's the power of the great physician that brings healing. His name is Jesus. And the place to get started, well, it's repentance. He calls us to wholeness. And the place to get started 
is repentance. This morning, you know enough to get started. Don't delay. Don't delay. Jesus called. He calls us to to wholeness. Not only does he call us to wholeness, but he calls us to compassion. This is what verse 13 says. Jesus said, I desire compassion and not sacrifice. Does that seem a little strange to you? It seems a little strange to me because he says, I desire compassion and not sacrifice. It's like he's setting up opposites, but the opposite of compassion would be contempt or I desire compassion and not meanness or not hard-heartedness or I desire compassion and not hatred, but I desire compassion and not sacrifice. Uh, At first blush, that just doesn't seem to make sense at all. But so often when we come to to Jesus, that the desire is a transaction. That God, I'll, I'll do this if you do this for me. And that we are the center of it. That if we give sacrifice, God gives us something in return. That it's a transaction. And that we are the center of that transaction. But that's not what Jesus is calling to. He's calling us to compassion, a change of heart, not so we'll get something, but so we'll do what's best for another. The the transaction is not about us, it's a heart for others. It's a heart for others. Read a story about the Dutch governor general of the country of Java that he was complaining to a friend one day about all the improvements, all the things that they had done for the people in Java. That the, the Dutch government brought them hospitals, brought them schools, that they had eliminated diseases, they had created roads, they had created railways, and still the people of Java wanted the Dutch to leave. And he turned to his friend and he said, can you tell me why? And his friend said, yes, I'm afraid it's because you've never had the right look in your eye when you spoke to them. Jesus, when he calls, his desire is not just for a superficial change, but a change of the heart that brings compassion, where the relationship with him isn't just a different way where we get what we want, that we love God for our sake, that he... He serves us in everything that we want. That Jesus' call for you and for me is a compassion. A compassion where we do what's best for others. And that a heart for others is what's changed in our hearts. You know enough to get started. His name is Jesus. And don't delay. Answer his call. Jesus calls. He calls us to wholeness. He calls us to compassion. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is he calls us to joy. This is what verse 14 says. The disciples of John came to Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Fasting is a religious practice of doing without food. And when you do without food for very long at all, you figure out what it is that makes you grumpy. And that's the place that God needs to work on, the the things that make you grumpy, the things that make you short-tempered. You find out pretty quickly in fasting where your heart is. And the other thing that happens when you fast for very long is you look like an unmade bed. And John's disciples are saying, well, We and the Pharisees, we look like unmade beds and we're grumpy, but your disciples look like a moving party. You've got this joy going on with you wherever you go. Why is that? And Jesus answers with the description of a party, of the bridal party, of a wedding party. And wedding parties back in Jesus' day, they they weren't like they are for us today. They didn't just last a, a night, an evening or even a half a day and move on from there. They started on Wednesday, always. And they started as a parade. And as they made their way to the place of the wedding, they gathered momentum, lasted nearly a week. 
And it was a call to celebrate, to celebrate in the joy of the bride and the groom. It wasn't a call to celebrate in the joy of, of, of whatever they had going on with their life. It was to celebrate in the joy of another, to take part in their joy. Who celebrates with you? Can you think of a person that celebrates with you, that shares your joy with you? Chances are pretty good that it's a, a pretty small number. Jesus' disciples, when they answer the call of Jesus, that we carry with us joy. Not because the circumstances benefit us, but because we celebrate with others. If you want to double your joy or more than double your joy, join in the celebration of joy with others. And what it is that that they celebrate, you'll stand out. You'll stand out as a follower of Jesus Christ because he has power that we don't have to celebrate in the joy of others. Comedian Paul Jensen tells a story about a walk he had with his four-year-old. They were walking along the sidewalk and he saw a little rubber ball off to the side of the sidewalk. His four-year-old said, Dad, can I keep it? Paul said, sure. Well, little boy went over and grabbed the little rubber ball and said, this is the best day ever. That's when Paul Jensen said, it was at that minute that I hated everything about being an adult. <laughs> well, so often being an adult, well, it means that we worry. It means that we take on responsibility. It means we see the circumstances and we see the problems and not the blessings. When Jesus calls us to follow, he calls us to see the blessing, to see the joy, to celebrate with others because Jesus is in our midst. He calls us to follow him. This morning, I want to invite you to enter into his joy, to celebrate with his joy, and don't delay because he calls you to do that today. You know enough to get started. Jesus starts with repentance, and I want to invite you to do the same as well, to know you and I that we're broken, and that's why Jesus came. That's why the great physician came to bring healness, to make a healing, to make us strong and whole in the broken places. Join with me in prayer, let's pray. Jesus, your call this morning is the call that it was yesterday and the day before and 2,000 years ago. It's a call to change, a call to repentance, a call to recognize that without you, we are broken. But you call us to wholeness, to repentance. Not out of our strength, not out of our power, but a call to you, to depend on you, to lean on you, to rely on you. You not only lead us to wholeness, but you lead us to compassion to a new creation that, well, it doesn't focus on our wants. That you, Jesus, are the center of this new creation and you call us to compassion, a heart for others. Give us the strength we need to answer your call today. I know there may be folks today that um, see real clearly the worry and the responsibility. See real clearly the problems and not the blessings. When you breathe the joy of your new creation in us, with that came along the power to see. Not the problems, but the blessings. And to turn those blessings back to you, to share in the blessings with others, to celebrate 
in your joy. We need your strength to do that because we mess it up on our own. Jesus, I ask for that strength now, this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you wanna see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 11.15 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We wanna be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace, amen.